Good evening and welcome to Omni Dog and Omni Cat comic book review show. We're on the right time, the right place, the right <laughs> night, the right person, and we're doing Spider Man tonight. Is that right, Omni Cat? All the titles, all the times, the date, it's all right. You know, so now when people come in, you don't have to be like, well, guess what? It's not this show. <laughs> This is right. I, I got it right. Now we're going to review Spider-Man like we were supposed to. Uh, well, like we were supposed to this day, apparently. And I yeah. thought it was last week. <laughs> but it all worked out. And everything got read. And right? You read everything? Yeah. The good news is you were ahead on the reading. And I finished <laughs> about 20 minutes ago. So <laughs> just in time. Yes. Uh, yeah. I was a week ahead on the read. I, I all day sa Saturday. I read it. I got a show tonight. I got to finish this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Jess, how, how organized are you really? Um, I, mean, I assume you don't mean both Omnis. Cause if that's the case, I'm behind. <laughs> oh, I, where are we doing both? No, crap. It's the first one, and to be specific, um, uh, I have the best of Spider Man volumes, and Kristen has the actual omnibus, right? Yes, it's naked right now, but yes, um, yeah. And I had a hard time, I, I actually didn't put up any books to look for in the description because these, I apologize to the audience, all these JMS first collection are, are out of print. The omnibus is out of print. The ultimate collections are out of print. Uh, these best ofs are out of print, although I don't know how hard they are to find. <clears throat> so I assume at some point soon that the JMS volume one will get reprinted because Marvel seems to be doing a good job uh, reprinting everything, um, new stuff, old stuff. I mean, they're really churning it out. So I'm, I have a strong feeling. I would, I would bet by the end of the year, it will be at least if, if it's not coming out, it will at least be announced. So don't go out and spend $300 on the JMS volume one, just be patient and you'll get enticed by our review. <laughs> and you'll want to get it and just uh, have patience and it will come back into stock. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's going for crazy prices. That's probably the most whaley omnibus I have at this point. Oh, and okay. uh, I would think because, you know, we'll read the X-Men maybe before, but you know, that's been announced. So I don't know what else I have that would be as expensive as this is going for. Do not pay those stupid prices. It's crazy. It will definitely be reprinted just a matter of when yeah i i think it was so popular that i i would think they'd have to reprint it yeah. and i i would think it's in their best interest to do it sooner rather than later i this is just my bias but if it's a choice between stan lee and jack kirby's first x-men or this mm. people would rather see this i i know the x-men out there want that first volume of the omnibus, but that is some ponderous reading. And I will tell you, Thor number one is even more ponderous. Um, uh, you you can reprint Thor number one. Uh, has that been announced or is uh, or anything? I don't think so. There was okay. some Thor Omni that was out of print that was announced. I don't think it was that one. Oh, okay, well, I could be wrong. Someone will correct me. What? Well, uh, Number one can be reprinted, and I'm still not going to get it. I had it for a long time when I was in my early buying every Omni I could find at my LCS for a hundred bucks. Um, but then I read some of it online, and I'm like, "This is just how I remember it as a kid. I, this doesn't make any sense." It's verily thou loci, get thee to a nunnery or whatever, and I was like, "What the heck? <laughs> get thee to a nunnery." <laughs> Ah, Glenn two two K says Thor one has been announced. Okay, so uh, that was the one. Love, okay. love, but I'm not getting it. I'm not either. No, I got enough to buy. I'm fine. <laughs> yeah, I that that would be something I just wouldn't read. But if you want to read it, if you've been dying for it, I'm happy that your uh, book got announced. Um, I will if X Men one ever gets reprinted. 
I found that a little more interesting than Thor, just because I thought the concept was interesting. But I know even Riley feels like it's really boring, and he's a huge X Men fan. Um, I'm sure it's just a matter of time before that X Men one gets reprinted. So my point and Kristen's point: uh, don't buy JMS Volume One for ridiculous prices. Just uh, enjoy a review and wait. To wait. check out Marvel Unlimited. I mean, if you want, if you really want to read it after this, that's the way to go. And then wait for that Omni. Uh, here we have a compliment for you, Kristen. Hi, Jess and Kristen. Oh. I like your shirt, Jess. Thank you. It's the closest thing to Spider-Man <laughs> I have. It's I still... mean, mine's pretty cool, but... Oh, it is. <laughs> and I like your shirt, Jess. And the cat show you did earlier today was fun, Kristen. Well, thank you for that, Chris. I'm glad you were there. I had no idea. That's That was the show you were telling me about that was on just Twitch? Yeah, so if anyone's interested, um, you could follow me at the Comic Slayer on Twitter. I tweeted out the link to that, so you can check it there. Easier than just telling you, because um, it was just on Twitch. But it was really fun. We talked about cat Twitter and cat comics. The good stuff. And My cat showed up, you know. <laughs> yeah, it was on cat Twitch. Yeah, cat Twitch. <laughs> Yeah, Sazmurf has it right. Have at thee, Jess. That's about <laughs> what it was. Um, but maybe <laughs> sell it for ridiculous prices if you have it. Yeah. I, I've been tempted. <laughs> I, boy, I bet. That, if it's 300 bucks, I don't know that I could turn that down. It's a lot of dodge. Um, Farhan, hi, Jess and Kristen. Early Sunday morning here and woke up to this. Great stuff. Peace and love from Malaysia. Nice. Awesome. Our, our most awesome Malaysian viewer. Um, we, I can always count on Farhan to be in the chat. Thank you, Farhan. Um, so last week I made a mistake and I did, a, but I did do a live review uh, of the books I had been reading. But this week, yes, JMS Spider-Man and uh, Wait, where's volume one? Here it is. Now I have the best of, so it's got some JMS in it, but it's also got like a Greg Rucka story in it and uh, some other stuff. Let's see, Amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man's Tangled Web, Peter Parker Spider-Man by Paul Jenkins, and Ultimate Marvel Team Up, <laughs> Team Up by Brian Michael Bendis. This is actually a pretty good book. I, I liked all the stories uh, in this. Um, but uh, the JMS story, um, first of all, it's illustrated by J.R.J.R., who's, I, based on this art, I don't, I feel like he gets a bad rap. I liked this art. I personally liked this art a lot. Um, I... I have mixed feelings. Uh, okay. There's some of it. There's some of it I like more than others. Like for example, I mean, Aunt May here just kind of <laughs> looks like a corpse. I mean, right? Like, <laughs> so that was a little rough. And every time, well, not every time. In certain panels with Mary Jane, it was bad. Let me find a good one for you. I'm sure I can find one. Okay. Um, everyone else, though. I mean, Peter looks good. Yeah. Spider Man looks great. Like, I like a lot of it. Hey, Kenny. How's it going, buddy? Hey. I say that now. I'm like, there's so many pages. I'll find one. Um, I'm flipping. You're flipping. Um, I, uh, okay. I, I actually, I want to see. Uh, just we put a spoiler banner up. I have not reached this point in my spider read through. I will listen after the review is over. Sure, that's a, that's a fair thing. Uh, let's see. Intervention, tangent, spoilers. <laughs> well, it's not spoilery yet, unless okay, you care what we yet. hear about the art. We're you know? talking about the art right now, but I will put up when we start reviewing uh, MM40. I will put uh, that up. Um, so I, for the most part, I, I like JR, JR's art throughout the whole thing. Uh, I especially like the 9-11, uh, edition. Yeah, that was really well done. 
which I'd heard about that forever, but I've never read it. Same. I and really, I really liked it. how they did it. Yeah, I thought it was I, no word balloons, just really, uh, uh, really deeply thought out, really well written. Um, Narration boxes, yeah. Yeah, it was really touching and and uh, surprisingly uh, moving for a comic book. I thought it was exactly, uh, it showed exactly what a comic book can be, how moving and touching a comic book can be, um, was the 9-11 issue. That was in the first, this was in the first book. It was the last story in the first book that I have of Amazing Spider-Man. Um, well, there were some word balloons, but mostly it was just really amazing, uh, amazing, uh, uh, it's almost poetry, I thought. Absolutely. I think there's no better way they could have done an issue like that. Yeah. It was just kind of perfect. Um, I found Mary Jane. Okay. okay. It's hard to hold this big honking book. Okay, so this this in particular. You didn't like that picture? I mean, look, she's just, it's like she's grimacing, but that's not what he meant to do. <laughs> like, her face looks really wide. I'm trying to get to focus. It's not really working. Yeah. And she just kind of, there she goes. She just oh, kind of okay. looks waxy and kind of like a doll. I don't know. It's It kind of creeped me out every time she showed up like that. Oh. You know okay. what I mean? Yeah, I didn't pick up on that. It happened a lot with that particular, like, with weird. With Mary Jane? Yeah, like, it, she had a weird jawline. It was very wide and weird, and she looked kind of just not human sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see how much Mary Jane... I think he has that problem with some people, though, So, because then there was a... What, I forget this girl's name. But right here, she kind of looks like a mannequin, too. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, that, that picture right there is kind of odd. Yeah. That, yeah. So there were just moments... That's a good word for it. There were just moments where I was like, your people look odd. <laughs> like, just yeah, a bit. I can see it. I can see it. Um, I will just say, for the most part, uh, I, I dug it. Um. And I'd say more often than not, yeah. But I just kept noticing that sometimes. Or I'm like, I don't like what's happening here. Yeah. Um, so would you like to get into the story? Now there's I can so, so much. Right? Yeah, there's so much. Yeah. Okay, now spoilers. Because we're going to talk about the story now. Uh, Lloyd Wong says, J.R. J.R. is an acquired taste. I prefer J.R. Sr., but they both have unique styles. Yeah. Um, thank you for liking my silk t-shirt. I appreciate it. I think Cindy Moon's awesome. I, if there, if she's, there should be a Disney Plus show of her, I think. And yeah. Has it already been announced or anything? I've lost track. I've lost track too. I'm not sure. Well, if there hasn't been, there should be. Mm -hmm. Her and Dr. Afra are my top two TV shows that need to happen. I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, I loved a lot of it. The very first, the very first uh, book um, I thought was the character of Ezekiel. I hmm. thought really cool. Yeah. I really liked the introduction of Ezekiel and the whole concept of the spider totem that, that Spider-Man represented um, an ancient force. I really thought that was a cool idea and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. He was um, an interesting character in a lot of ways because, you know, he had these mysterious powers like Spider-Man. It's like, how, how, and he's confused half the time too. And then he would just keep popping up. He kept popping up, kept popping up. I'm like, what's going to happen with this dude? You know? And I liked him and I liked when he showed up. I love the scene with him and Mary Jane and Peter having dinner together because Mary Jane was just like, this never happens. Like I may see the people that Peter, you know, knows through costumes and stuff, but like, they don't know both sides of him, so this never happens. So that was a nice moment that they yeah. got to share, you know. But what sucks 
is how that all ended, right? Well, we're, that you mean that's jumping way ahead, right? Well, I'm, if we're talking, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're are talking you about Ezekiel, going to the I mean, end of the omnibus? Well, that's not the complete end. Um, well, it, uh, he had a um, run in since he was a spider totem. Uh, since the Spider-Man represented the spider totem and the whole Ezekiel thing was new to him, Ezekiel tried to build built him um, a safe house type thing in a, in a building so that Morlin and it turns out uh, later another being, um, they wanted his his blood uh, as he was the spider totem, but I thought this, I thought Moreland was a good character. Um, I liked how just strong and unbeatable he was and how, how Dracula he was. Yeah. And <laughs> how, um, how he was so relentlessly focused and Spider-Man needed Ezekiel to help him and what Spider-Man had to do to himself, to rid himself of Morlin, um, which this part, I realize all of comics require a suspension of disbelief, but injecting yourself with even more radioactivity is kind of um, even cr crazier than crazy, uh, but it works. Uh, and that's like the only way to defeat uh, Moreland. Um, and then the 9-11 issue happened. So that's the first book. That's the first book that I read. And then Best of Spider-Man 2 still had some tangled. Uh, wait, let's see. Did, was it all? I feel like there was some more tangled web type stuff. Yeah, there was. Tangled Web and Peter Parker. So it, this just had a few Amazing Spider-Man uh, books in it. Uh, Aunt May finds out for the first time that Spider-Man is Spider-Man. And it Yeah, and I like that, but I was also just bothered by how bothered she was about it, <laughs> you know? Did she think Spider-Man was a criminal up until this point or just worried about Peter's being Spider-Man. Um, I don't know how she felt about him. I can't remember that part, but she was definitely worried and consistent. Like, I don't want you to do this. Yeah. And that was just every conversation they had about it. I'm like, I get it. You don't want him to be hurt, but he's doing it. He's been doing it. Yeah. Um, then well then, and then she gets upset because she reads all of this stuff about Spider-Man threat or menace and she confronts J, J. Jonah Jameson herself. That was great. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great moment. I love that she wrote all those letters to like every single publication who who only does like negative stuff about Spider-Man. Yeah. Um So uh this was also um where he become Peter Parker becomes a science teacher, um, has interactions with students, takes interests in certain students to help them. Um, and I thought that was cool. I liked the interaction with the students. Um, he had a good way with students. I, is, if, is that realistic that students would actually pay attention to uh, a new teacher like that? I, I don't know, but it, you know, it's comic books. So I went with it. I think it's more unrealistic that, you know, cause he was like meeting that girl after school and like, you know, getting all up in her personal home life. And I'm like, mm, I don't think that would happen or even necessarily be appropriate, but I'll let it go. Cause it's Spider-Man. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? I was wondering that too, about the appropriateness of it. Um, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you got to like tell services or something about the situation and not handle it yourself, but it's fine because it's a comic book. <laughs> but I did have those thoughts and I, I did really like that storyline though, where with the girl, I can't think of her name, but he was helping her um, with her home situation. 
and that whole thing. I'm trying to find, I can't even remember her name, but I like that. I like him as a teacher. Yeah. And it makes sense, makes perfect sense. Yeah, because he knows a lot about science. Um, so I, and I came into this not knowing that there had been a rift between Spider-Man, I'm sorry, Peter and Mary Jane. So that was all new to me. And I thought it was interesting how it was handled. I thought they handled it. I thought it was handled really well. I liked Doc Ock going up against um, this guy that had taken his technology and tried to improve it. Um, I thought the inter the um, the writing for the interpersonal relationship between Peter and Mary Jane uh, actually felt realistic to me. Um, okay, now wait. This uh, now as far as art goes, the guest artist that showed up. This mm. was weird. Oh dear, it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was weird is a good word for it. Yeah, what's that face right there? Oh I'm gosh. Peter. What kind of jaw is that? Like I don't know. <laughs> um after Ezekiel and Moreland, who were two interesting new additions to uh the Spider-Man world, I just thought the showing up of the green goblin was just like, oh, um, we got to go through this again. We got to <laughs> sit through flipping green goblin. I, that story just felt tired as soon as it started. That wasn't by JMS, right? Cause I don't think I read that. Oh, Oh, did I read ahead? Oh, I wonder if I did. Oh, it was Umberto Ramos and Paul Jenkins. Okay. I read ahead. Okay, that was the gotcha. spider. Okay. I was like, I don't remember that at all. Okay, sorry. That's okay. my bad. I read ahead. Uh, I I read something that wasn't even. <laughs> I read <laughs> something that wasn't even part of the book. Um, uh, okay, well then I apologize to JMS. Um, uh, someone we haven't mentioned that I wanted to. What was his name? The cop, the good cop, uh, Lamont. Is that right? Yeah, that was yeah. interesting. I loved that, that he finally, like, he found a cop that wasn't like Spider-Man's bad and he could meet up with him and he could trust him. He, you know, there's a big trust toward the end, but he just kept being able to come to him and the guy wasn't pushing to know who he was or like even really question much of it. They kind of just trust each other. And I really like that. Yeah. I, that, that was another new element added in that I, um, that I thought was great. So forget I said anything about Green Goblin. I read, I read ahead, <laughs> and I read Paul Jenkins and Umberto and um, Umberto Ramos. Uh, I loved his Strange Academy uh, art, but I did not care for his art in this story that uh, doesn't even um, need to be talked about <laughs> because it didn't take place in the JMS universe. Uh, let's see, volume three, and this was all JMS, I believe. Yeah, 46 to 58 plus the 500 issue. Um, uh, we should be near the Doctor Strange stuff, I think. Let's see, Doctor Strange. Um, we are this was, um, in this arc, I mean, in this book, there uh, the big story was the uh, the um, the pit of gamma ray goop that all the uh, gangsters fell in back in the fifties, hmm. back to life and tracking down the uh, uh, mob boss that uh, gave the hit order on them. Uh, yeah, that stuff was fun. Uh, mostly because the dialogue, like the dialogue, was <laughs> was really fun to see him go through that, and you know the things that we clearly don't say now. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, Peter trying to make like correlations with the Hulk and like what's happening to this guy. Right. 
Um, let's see what else in this was notable. Oh yeah, here's Doctor Strange. Oh yeah, this was really good. How I thought this was excellent. Um, how they interfered with something that Doctor Strange. Um, they interfered with it and messed up the timeline and Doctor Strange had to show up uh, and take Peter back through the timeline. But I thought this was really good. Yeah, I really liked when they went through like Peter's head, <laughs> kind of. Yeah. And like, especially all these Mary Janes just like walking around and the dude's like, hey, you got a type? Like what? <laughs> so that was really fun. I like that whole sequence. He had to relive all his famous early moments um, because they let Dor by doing what they did, they let Dormammu back into the dimension, our dimension, and he was going to scorch Earth. So Doctor Strange has to take uh, Peter back through um, his own timeline to get, and and so we relive a bunch of famous moments in Spidey's history. Uh, and I, I thought that was really well done so that he can stop Spider-Man right before the Fantastic Four uses a weapon and um, lets Dormammu back in to the uh, universe and Doctor Strange can go off and take on, uh, finish off the battle with Dormammu in a, in a different, uh, <clears throat> let's see, wait, oh yeah. He takes care of him. I mean, he, he seals the dimension off right away and gives Peter Spider-Man a special little box that was like a gift from Doctor Strange uh, for a very special day that we find out about later. Oh, later in the story, two pages later. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that in that the end of that <laughs> issue? <laughs> yeah, and it was awesome. I won't yeah, spoil I, who he who he spends it with, but it was really awesome. He he, uh, he got really a cool. chance to use the gift, and um, yeah, it was really cool. I thought that was a touching end to a really cool story of reliving all of uh, Spidey's famous battles with uh, you know the Vulture and the Lizard and Doc Ock and whoever else was there in the very beginning. Uh, Hulk. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, I, I love the ending of that. Um, I think we're also, yeah, we're close to the um, the Taylor guy. Yeah. Who I can't, I can't think of his name, of course, but uh, he was like, he ended up being, like, superheroes would come into this little Taylor shop and they found out he was good at keeping secrets and he was going to ask a lot of questions and he could fix their costumes and help them even create new costumes. And he overhears something some of the bad guys are about to do and he finds Spider-Man, who's not one of his customers, and he's like, I had to go to you because you're not a customer, but I have to stop this from happening. I can't, like, on good conscience, like, let this person die, so you need to stop it from happening. And that, I love that whole issue. That was really, really cool. Yeah. Um, where was that? Uh, I think, he, I think your looking, books are like different than what I'm looking at. So. <laughs> um, well, I'm in my final book. Uh, is I believe it takes it all the way up till the end, 501 to 514. Um, I'm trying to see where the uh, where the tailor tailored to the villains happens um, because that was a really interesting story. I really liked it. Where was that? There's In mine, it's like two issues after the last one we talked about with the box. Two issues after. Okay. Let's see. I, let me find that issue number. That would help maybe. Oh, yeah. Okay. 502. 502. Okay. It's called you want, you want Pants with that. <laughs> um, you want pants with that? Yeah, right here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, yeah, I enjoyed that. And he's he's talking in a the dialect of 
like the neighborhood that he grows up in, uh, grew up in the uh, the Taylor, Mashuga. He's got um, Mr. Bug Guy. Hey up there, Mr. Bug Guy, come down here. What you got webs in your ears? Hello, <laughs> hello. I yeah, love how so he points out that Peter has an accent, and Peter's like, "I don't have an accent." And he's like, just stares at him. Like, are you serious? <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and he criticizes Spider-Man's costume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. He keeps going back to it. He's like, really? Like, you, you have to lift up your mask to eat? Like, come on. Don't you just want, like, a Velcro option or, like, something else? I can help you out, man. Yeah. Um, I I really enjoyed that Taylor thing. It was, and then he gives, then he gives Spidey the, um, his drawing of what he thinks the Spider-Man <laughs> uniform could look like. Yeah, More and he's practical. like, I'll give you a good deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just love that, you know, there's probably like a million different very specific characters like this who see what he's doing all the time, who live in this world with, with costumes everywhere, and they're, they have their own life and their own like situation going on that's really unique to the story. I love when those kind of characters pop up. And it was so well done because, like, oh, I care about this guy now, you know, and he's been here yeah. how long? And now we get to highlight him. Right. And he, oh, and then Loki shows up because um, I thought that was a, a, a fun, um, a fun sort of side story where um, <clears throat> I love, well, I love this panel in particular when all these presences omni presences in the marvel universe all of a sudden feel an odd sensation and it's um uh it is a goddess from asgard morwen first sorceress of chaos takes over uh the body of loki's daughter and so Loki shows up and does, I don't think the daughter knows that Loki is her father. Um, but Loki actually works with Spider-Man to try and get Morwen out of the daughter's body. I thought that was, uh, I enjoyed that run just because it was interesting to see Loki um, work sort of hand in hand with Spider-Man to do something good. Yeah, this is a weird random thing that's not plot related at all. But within these issues, maybe a few, I think a few issues before this, I noticed that there was a font change where now we have upper and lowercase letters constantly in the word bubbles, in the narration boxes, in both of it. And I was so put off by that after reading wow. well, instead of instead of all capital letters in the dialogue which is like what you get toward the beginning me uh oh even in the narration boxes in the beginning they were all capitals so like i'm trying to hold this and keep my place yeah so you know which this is classic marvel that's that's what they do now i believe uh if we could come on focus well you can tell it's all capitals yeah so somewhere toward the middle of this book we changed to upper and lowercase letters. And it really threw me off as I was reading it because I was so used to the capitals. And then, I don't know, several issues later, we go back toward the end of the whole Omni, all capitals again. <laughs> and I'm like, who's making these choices? Because I'm bothered. <laughs> I know that's such a little thing. Clearly, you didn't notice. But I was just like, why is it so different? What's happening? Someone made the choice. The letterer made the choice, but I was just like, that's interesting because I don't remember this happening within any other Omni I've read where I'm thrown off by the text like that. Oh, that's so interesting because I, I didn't even notice it, yeah. which is why I'm glad that there's two of us. Because <laughs> it gives two completely different viewpoints, and that's what I really like. Um, uh, I, I hadn't paid attention to that, but yeah, I can see how uh, it would be off-putting to you. Yeah, and I, you know, you get used to it, and of course, like, 
there's tons of comics like that. But when when you've consistently read it within this run and then it changes and then it changes back, I'm just like, that's an interesting choice. I'd be curious why someone decided to do that. No one's going to tell me. No one cares but me. I'm just saying. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I have to show a compliment. River says two of my faves. So glad to see you all back tonight. Thank Thank you, you, River. River. Lovely. Um, let's see where else we are with this. Oh, and then there's it gets super spidery. Like this was oh. I, this was rough for me. Didn't like it. <laughs> Didn't like it at all. No. <laughs> what all did it to end? Real all over the place. <laughs> Oof, so gross. And I'm sorry to go back, but I just happened to flip to this page trying to find the spiders. I love them sitting on the side of the building. And Peter being like, but but hot dogs and drinks and Loki's like, uh, you know, this is your this is what you say the finest cuisine the city has to offer. <laughs> and he's so put <laughs> off by it. And I just love that image. I, I thought that was great too. I love that humor. Um so then we lean way into the spider totem thing where Ezekiel um and Spider Man sort of have to have it out because Ezekiel um, there needs to be a blood donation to um, a blood donation to the um, I don't know the, the spider the, god the spider <laughs> god that gave Ezekiel his powers and so um, Peter's locked up and he has his um, he has his blood drained. Yeah, Ezekiel cuts him up. Yeah, and his blood gets drained while they're in the like sacrificial temple. But then some. I thought this was a really good panel or uh, to cover thing where they each mm. experience uh, each other's lives and thought patterns. That was really cool. And Ezekiel has a complete change of heart. Um, and then the giant spider comes to consume one of them. Yeah, right before, like after he experienced Peter's life, he was just like, I haven't done anything. Like this guy made a difference and he's right. lived his life with purpose. And what have I done? Oh, and these spider images, I hate it. <laughs> oh, I, I have to say, JR, JR did a really good job yeah. creeping me out with these oh, spider yeah. images. For sure. Um, so before we get to the last story, is there anything else we want to cover, um, before we talk about, uh, this last story? Oh, here's another compliment. Let's talk about our compliments. (laughs) My Saturday always gets better when you two are on. Thanks for all the videos. Thank you, Jesse. Say what? Thank you. Jesse's always here with the thumbs up. I love it. Yeah, I appreciate that. We both appreciate that. Absolutely. And Hayden, well, there are spoilers up. So he says, I'm just going to eat my gummy bears and pretend <laughs> I know what you're talking about while I only have volume two. Thanks Joe, for being here, Hayden. <laughs> this is one of his favorite Spider Man runs ever. Um, I loved this whole, what's a, the first omnibus to you? Um, was the first four books in um, The Best of Spider-Man. And then we come to a story called Sin's Past. Um, Kristen, Me. I think this is the most fucked up story I've ever read. Uh, I was going to ask if this is... Um a big controversy among Spidey fans because I read it and was, I'm still creeped out by it. Um, And I have a problem with it and I haven't even read like the most Spider-Man ever. I wonder how Tyler feels about it, right? Like, do you know? Cause I'm gonna ask, but like, mm, because like, who's digging this? That's what I wanna know. Who's like, yeah, that's good. This is a good story choice. I like this. I like where this went. Yeah. Cause, no. 
No. Miller said, when I told him what we were going to do, he said, just so you know, I'm not going to say who or what it is, but at the end of the first omnibus is a, a terrible story that will change the way you feel about a character and it's horrible. And yeah. I got to it and finished it and I called him up and I love Gwen Stacy. I always have, I was always, I grew up loving her and I was always more of a Gwen Stacy than a Mary Jane as a kid, like an eight year old and a 12 year old. Um, so, I mean, it starts out okay with Mary Jane doing well and getting a part in a play. I did like that moment, if we can pause there, um, where she is just sure. went on all these auditions and been genuinely terrible, but keeps trying. But there was finally someone who cared to give her some advice mm -hmm. that, instead of just stop acting at all. Like, here, here's what you should do. You should stop acting. Stop feeling like you're having to stop pretending to act and just like feel something. Mm -hmm. And it really helped her. And I, I really like that moment. Cause that guy could have turned into a jerk, like everyone else she'd encountered. Right. So she was given finally some real advice and it changed her life really. And I liked that. Yeah. So it started out nice. <laughs> it, it started out really nice. That was a really nice moment. Um, does it look like Lamont is Robert Redford here? <laughs> I wondered about the art because I was like, that's 100% what he yeah. looks like. Yeah, I don't know about this art. Um, the, it's not JRJR JR art. It's, um, let's see who it is. Since past, well, it's Mike Diodato. He's actually quite a good artist. Yeah, and Peter yeah. looks good. Gwen looks good. Yeah, I think it was just Lamont was like, what? I, I, <laughs> I like that he looked like, um, uh, like that. Um, but I like that he looked like Robert Redford, but, uh, the, what was done to Gwen in this is just unforgivable. It is unforgivable. It's it also un still doesn't make any sense to me. It is unforgivable, unnecessary, unwanted, unneeded. No one, there's nobody out there in the world that said, I need to have her sleep with Norman Osborn for some reason. Nobody wanted that. There's, there's not no. a single letter in Marvel's office. <laughs> yeah, that no, says, no one's asking for that. Can you please have Norman Osborn sleep with Gwen Stacy? Uh, love, uh, not Jess Bragg. <laughs> I bet there wasn't even fanfic of this before the story came out. And that's saying something because there's fanfic of everything. But no one wanted, they don't even want to pretend in their basement for that, you know? Like it's not happening. Yeah. And it still doesn't I, make sense. Like the reason they even gave was what she saw him one day and he was like sad or something. Is that right? Like it just didn't and make any animal sense. Animal magnetism or something? Yeah, she was like drawn to him and he was mysterious. What? Is he? Like <laughs> Norman Osborn? <laughs> Nasty. Like 50 year old Norman Osborn with 20 year old Gwen Stacy? Uh, what? It's creepy on all the levels. Uh, and it still doesn't make any sense. No, and they had twins and Gwen was killed by Norman Osborn because he was the Green Goblin. And they like tried to retcon that into how he ended up killing her. And I'm just like, if this story had happened earlier, I would have not had the will to go on. I almost <laughs> lost the will to live reading this story. <laughs> I'm glad you did it. <laughs> but yeah, even the twins weren't even interesting. I was just bothered by them the whole time. You know, yeah. bothered by the whole thing. It was just like, this doesn't even, it still doesn't make sense. I just kept reading. It was like, nothing about this makes sense. I was waiting for it. Like, oh, maybe, no, it can't possibly. And it doesn't. Even their little reasoning doesn't, it's not a reason. No, not at all. It makes no sense and tarnishes her. Lloyd Wong said it exactly right. Ruin Gwen's legacy and sacrifice. Exactly. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. There was no reason for that story. And to finish on that story, uh, that yeah. was a bummer. I mean, come on. So if if there's a worse Spider-Man story out, this is what 
this is what made me, I don't know, we had a discussion on Omni Bros Thursday night and the uh, uh, Henry Abrams Spider-Man story came up and I, I, I really feel like as bad as that Henry Abrams Spider-Man story is, this thing was worse because it tore up a legacy, like Lloyd says, and didn't have to happen at all. There was no reason for it. And I'm equal parts angry, upset, frustrated, and pissed off. And I am, first of all, I am aware that it's a comic book and that this didn't actually <laughs> occur in real life. Don't anybody think that I've, I've lost my marbles and that I think Gwen Stacy actually existed. Um, but huh, that I, I, <laughs> I have the, I have the rest of JMS like the other and well I have volume five and the other and uh, whatever else he was supposed to have written I mean I have the I even have the second omnibus which uh, I accidentally bought um, but. I'm hoping that things turn around because a lot of people love JMS's Spider-Man run. And, and I did up until that point. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping Omnibus Volume 2 will sort of get me jump-started again on love, loving JMS's run. Because I thought Ezekiel was a good character. The, the Moreland vampire thing. And then mm -hmm. the... Um, female vampire i can't remember her name that's uh, neither here nor there but but uh, the spider totem thing that was yeah. interesting it was all really great um i love the interpersonal stuff with him and mary jane too it was really well done um uh, yeah i also loved it all up until this where i don't understand anything and what gets me is the twins are totally alive in the end right so like we're, what we're gonna have to deal with them again like is that is that a thing we got to deal with? Don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, I I liked all of it except for that. Um, is is all I can say, and I hated that. So, um, I I will push through and and read the rest of it because mm -hmm. I'm, we've got a jump start on it, and I feel like we I might as well finish it since I have the uh book. I feel the same, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, I don't know, man. It was not cool. That's what it was. <laughs> it was it's not cool at all. Not cool at all. Um, let's see, Lloyd Wong says, that was editorial 100%. JMS had Peter, not Norman. They didn't want Peter as the father and thought it would be great for Norman to be the father instead. That's interesting. Editorial's it's, creepy. So JMS was forced to write in Norman as the father. I gotta say though, how about we just not have her have been have been pregnant at all? How about that? Like, <laughs> I think yeah, that was I think, the decision. Because even I the Peter I'm, thing would be too traumatizing for him. Like, no. I think I'm just gonna ignore this story. <laughs> okay. It didn't happen. That's probably what a lot of people do. That's my yeah. guess. I'm going to ignore it and just say it didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't happen. So go ahead and read JMS Volume 1 and the story that didn't happen. Or skip that one and live your life. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> That's the best <laughs> advice of all. That yeah. is the best advice right there. Um, so I guess we're done. I can take the spoilers down. Um, if there's anybody that has any questions for us or anything, we can uh, happily answer them uh, or just general chat about comics, uh, stuff like that. Uh, we can certainly talk about um, more Spider-Man or whatever you want, or or we could be done. It's you know up to you guys. We're we're cool. Yeah. I am, um, are, for the next, our next uh, show, do we want to read volume two or do we want to go on to something different? Well, our next show is the eighth. Oh. Glad I told you. 
because you were going to be here having read JMS Volume Two, <laughs> and totally I'd be like, not "Dude, for the interview." <laughs> yeah. So, well, yeah. Do we want to talk about we, it? Yeah. Why don't we talk about what uh, you've got set up for us? So Kyle Starks is going to be here on the eighth. We're going to talk to him. It's going to be a blast. Uh, Sex Castle. He wrote. You got to check it out. Kill them all. Rock Candy Mountain. We're both big lovers of that one, especially uh, Old Head. Just, just all the hits. He's got them, and he'll be here. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna interview um, uh, Kyle uh, Starks, the um, creator of Hobo Fights. Yeah, I am gonna reread Rock Candy Mountain. Uh, I still have to read Sex Castle, and I think I still need to read Kill Them All. He wrote something else. I. I feel like it had a dog in it. Oh, uh, Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter. Okay. Yeah, I read that. I can't believe you haven't read Sex Castle. You have to. I have it. Oh. I will. It's so good. Okay. You'll like it. It's great. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that's our big announcement for the next show. That'll be fun. Oh, um, you can just also read uh, Assassination, which you can get on Hoopla. Oh, I wonder if I have that too. Yeah. Um, shoot, I don't have my. Um... He's coming out with a new image book, which I'm sure he'll talk about. Okay, good. Excited for that. Um, let's see. I wonder. I feel like I have Assassination Nation written down. <laughs> you always add book? a nation to it. I have. Sorry. You always add a nation to it. It's funny. Assassination <laughs> Nation. It's just Assassination. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on my Hoopla books. There you go. <laughs> and here's Kyle Starks, the writer of Assassination Nation, and <laughs> Kill Them All Real Good and Big Rock the Mountain Story. Just mar mangle up all his titles. <laughs> oh, Mars Attacks, too. Did you ever read that? It's so good. I you can get that on Hoopla as well. I'm going to tell people what you can get on Hoopla. You can get Sex Castle, Dead of Winter, Mars Attacks, um, Rock Candy Mountain. If you're into Rick and Morty, he's done a great Rick and Morty run. Uh, and that's what you can get on there, at least. So anyone with Hoopla who wants to read something before that, otherwise, go buy some books. Yeah. Yeah, Rock, pa Rock Candy... Rock Candy Mountain? I thought was awesome. I read that a Amazing. few years ago, and it was so great. And it's just two trades, so you don't have a big commitment there. It's worth it. Yeah. Hayden says, is there any spider stuff after JMS that you'd want to read for the shoe? <laughs> or show, not shoe, whichever. Um, I definitely want to read, um, eventually I want to read all of Dan Slott's. Yeah, uh, me too. That, um, I think after JMS I will start that. Uh, but we, I don't know that Kristen and I will review it, but we can, um, I mean, we can talk about it, but uh, here is, Sazmurf says, Jess, I drove behind someone yesterday with a license plate, <laughs> peace, love, and thought of you. Nice. Thank you, man. I'm sorry it wasn't me. Jess, are you going to buy and review Marvel <laughs> Meow by now Fuji's manga, what? It's come out in October. You didn't see this? I'm so excited. What What are we talking about? <laughs> Marvel Meow. Uh, it's it follows um, Captain Marvel's cat. Oh, with the fantastic art. Uh, I'll send you a link of is the it, announcement. Is it manga? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's been out in Japan. They're translating it. So I have to read it backwards. I'm not doing that. It's not backwards. You're just not used to reading that way. <laughs> My brain can't. <laughs> yeah. mm, only for weird Ito, huh? Okay. Yeah, Ito, I can't. <laughs> yeah, for. Which, hey, new Ito book out right now. I Short story collection. I, I saw that. Yeah. I got it on order. You got to get it so we can talk about it. Which one? Love Sickness. That's the new Ito book? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll get that. I, okay. can, I can read him. Yeah. Um, Jess, I started collecting the Obscure Cities books, and they're all beautiful. Yeah, they really are. They're uh, remarkable. Those are, I, I think Europeans feel like 
they are their watchman type books. They're uh, just incredible books. And I think uh, our European viewers hold them very close to their heart. Um, they're really good books. Um, let's see. Uh, welcome to our shoot. Yeah, Ed Sullivan. I probably am the only one that knows who Ed Sullivan is. I mean, I know who he is. I don't know that reference. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was the old... He had sort of an... Uh, um, uh, not an accent, but a way of talking that was really stilted. I, he was a radio guy first, and he, somehow he got on the TV and his show became one of the most popular, you know, television shows in black and white with the Beatles coming on and everything. It was a variety show. And he'd always, the imitation of was, him was always, welcome to our show, ladies and gentlemen. He'd say show instead of I show. See. So, and everybody say, welcome to our show. So that's the End Man 40 way nice. dated reference. But <laughs> I liked it. Um, here's a question for you. Uh, did I like Lazarus? I read volume one a few weeks ago and I liked it. I'll continue it. However, I'm real creeped out by that incest. I, I'm just real creeped out by that. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to put it down. I was like, I got to read something else. <laughs> um, I feel like it only gets worse. I don't know. You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. I yeah. I, I it didn't affect me the way it affected you. Uh, but I know, you, I know what you're talking about. Um, I concentrated more on the fact that uh, how they um, uh, how they had a Lazarus uh, and stuff. I, I was more interested in the Lazarus being created and things like that. I, well, obviously, it, that's more interesting. It just kept coming back, at least in the beginning. And I was like, why? I well, care more about myself. I'll have to go back and look at that because I, I will be honest. I don't. Re Usually, I'm fairly sensitive to incest. You'd think I. Um, <laughs> you were like, it didn't bother me. I'm like, oh, okay. I <laughs> yeah. I, I maybe I don't. I'll have to look at it and it see. It was two of the creepy siblings. You know, they're all like kind of terrible in that family. Yeah. Yeah, and it was two of them that were, and it's like, oh, why? Why is this part of this? <laughs> Like, okay, I'm gonna have villains. To, I'll have to go back and check that out because I don't remember. I mean, re I remember it in Game of Thrones, but I don't remember <laughs> it in Lazarus. Yeah, it was happening. Um, Jess, I'm getting next month Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson. All five volumes I've read the series so far digitally and after reading The Life of Captain Marvel and seeing her in the MCU need it. I didn't know that Kelly Thompson had five volumes that is how you're going to get an omnibus because I'm going to go buy all five volumes. <laughs> I love Captain Marvel by Kelly Thompson. I think I only have the first volume. I need to read that because I love her mm, and, I, mm -hmm. and I love Captain Marvel. So I'm sure I'll like it. Um, and I think she just said, um, uh, I, I, I think Omar just told me that uh, she did Black Widow and that the first trade of that came out and um, that it was awesome. Her, her Black Widow is apparently awesome. So I, I, want, I want to see that. I want to read that, rather. I'm, I'm looking at the chat as I'm talking, and I get all gobbled up. They need to let her write whatever she wants to. I want to see her write every character, I think. At this point, she's written a lot of them. Keep going. Yeah. It's all great. I, Whatever she wants to write, I will read. She's an automatic read for me. Mm -hmm. uh, here is a cat reference book. This book came out from Dark Horse called Cats Perfect Strangers. I heard about that in November. It might be up my alley. Will it? I think maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know I got to check it out for sure. Um. Yeah, I'd like to see her write Spidey. That's mm. fine. She certainly deserves to take on a major character. Yeah, that would be awesome. 
not that there's anything wrong with Captain Marvel and Black Widow, but she, yeah. Let her take over Hulk after Al Ewing leaves. Although I don't yeah. know. Well, yeah, why not? Let her take over Hulk. I don't mm -hmm. care. Let her Whatever do it all. Creates, I'll read. I love her Jessica Jones books. Are those the ones that were digital first and then they? Oh, yeah. yeah I read one of those. Great. It was great. Yeah. Those are great. Um, I have it, but I haven't read it yet. So I couldn't take part in the discussion the other day on almost mint condition or whatever it is when Tyler's <laughs> on. Um, I have it, but I haven't read it yet. I've read a lot of it before as a youth and the kid who collects Spider-Man or whatever it was, of course, the famous story, but I haven't read enough of it to to actually have an opinion on it, which actually hasn't stopped me before, but. <laughs> I've also only read that issue and I have the Omni. But I've had it for like years. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, I should really read that. But it's, I like that issue a lot, of course, like everybody. Sure. It's some clutch Spider-Man. Um, and uh, Hayden is getting the Captain Marvel omnibus written by Chris Claremont. And there's some really famous grotesquerie that happens in that book. I forget which issue it is. Issue 200 or whatever it is. Uh, I heard about that. I don't even want to talk about it. I All heard right. about that. Yeah. I want Kelly Thompson to write Supergirl. That'd be great. I'd like that too. Well, uh, we've been on for an hour and we talked all about JMS's Spidey. And next time we're going to have on Kyle Starks to interview. So everybody uh, read Kill Them All and Rock Candy Mountain and Sex Castle and what else? Uh, assassination. Assassination Nation. <laughs> Dead of Winter. Dead of um, Winter. Mars Attacks. I want to say I've never even seen Mars Attacks, and this comic is amazing. I loved it. So you don't even need knowledge. Like, it's not really tied into anything other than there's aliens. So really recommend that. It's so good. Ack, ack. Avenger 200. Yeah, that's it. Avengers 200. Right. That's the book you should, that's the issue you should just skip in Captain Marvel. Don't read it. Um, it's awful. Um, okay, so uh, where can we find you and when? Uh, you can find me uh, at the Comic Slayer on YouTube. I'm going to be, I know I say it all the time, but we're going to be putting some more stuff up soon. Read you guys' books in, so we're going to talk about that. Um, and the next show you can find me doing is Friday on the Omnibus Collectors Network. Because I work tomorrow. I'm sad about it. Oh. <laughs> and we're going to talk about One Piece. So, Talking about what? One Piece, which I'm still One reading. Oh. Still trying to get through it. Yep. Still going through One Piece. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, you can follow me here on Omnidogs Vault on YouTube and on Instagram, Omnidogs underscore vault. And uh, I should have a new video up tomorrow. And I'm going to do a live unboxing in the next couple days of the hostage uh <laughs> The hostage action figures that uh, Tlar Blunt sent me. That'll be exciting. I know. I should do it at night. <laughs> I should do it right before Omni Bros Monday night. Maybe I will. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, I will be on Omni Bros this Monday. Um, I don't think I felt well last Monday, or something happened where I couldn't do it last Monday. I think, uh, oh, I had gotten my second shot and I took uh, the only side effects I felt was extreme sleepiness. And that's what happened to me. Oh, really? Yeah, my second one. I got like later that night, I was just passed out. I was so, t I was hit with it. It was like, okay, this is a problem. <laughs> like I couldn't function. <laughs> yeah, I, let's see, I got it on a Thursday and then. Friday and Monday, I went to take a nap at four o'clock and woke up the uh, next day at like seven o'clock. Wow. I just straight through, but I should be fine for this Monday. <laughs> what a life. That, that's I good. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's good that was your only side effect though i mean i was happy oh, yeah. i got like a headache and then that and i was like okay i can deal with this i thought for sure i'd get sick to my stomach mm -hmm. i was so glad that just i mean taking a nap is a bad yeah. side effect i can deal with it <laughs> yeah i'll take it yeah so thank you for tuning in and uh peace and love thank you to the chat and peace and love peace and love we have a good night oh enemy on 40 i'll talk to you next time about dick, dick tracy you should have brought it up earlier darn it <laughs> okay so peace and love peace and love love you a lot we we dig you a lot thank you for tuning in it means everything to me thank and, uh, you good night everybody